Paul. CNN, New England <laughs> Journal of Medicine, plenary session uh, around targeted therapies in pancreas cancer. What's all the buzz? So this is truly exciting. Mm. If Shivam's a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Some disappointment. So, so this, was, this was an ambitious study, which I have to admit at the beginning thought was overly ambitious, mm. and they pulled it off. Mm. They, they looked at patients with metastatic pancreatic cancer who were then screened for germline mutation in BRCA1 or BRCA2, looked at over 3,000 patients internationally, mm -hmm. identified around 150 who had a germline mutation, so around 7 or 8%. I just want to make sure and re-clarify, because we were talking earlier about HRD and other targets. Right. This was just BRCA1 and 2 germline this mutation. Was just BRCA1 and 2, stuff. one tube of blood. Yeah. It shows you the power. If you're doing blood instead of tumor biopsies, mm -hmm. you can get 3,000. If you're doing biopsies, you know, we're you still struggling yeah. to get you're a few right. hundred. That's a very good point. And so if we could do blood, they did a great job of okay. collecting this, testing it, getting the results back quickly. And then patients had to then remain on first-line chemotherapy for at least four months, 16 weeks, and <coughs> not progress. If they met that criteria they, and they had this germline blood mutation of BRCA1 or BRCA2, they were eligible to be randomized to either get an oral PARP inhibitor, a laparib, or an oral placebo. It was a blinded study. And what the study showed is that those who got the PARP inhibitor had around a doubling of the time until their tumor recurred than those who got essentially nothing, which I think was validation of this concept that a PARP inhibitor in a patient with the right selection, which is a very small population ultimately, can provide benefit. Yeah. Ed, what's this do? to your thinking about, I think it's a, it's a controversial trial design, mm -hmm. uh, controversial result. I mean, this just reinforces what we talked about in the very beginning, that we need to test all mm. patients germline. Um, and to be able to use the Because only you'll invoke, you'll pr pr play this therapy option for all these patients? I think it's we, the, you know, the, one of the things that you mentioned was the improvement in the disease-free survival. So, uh, sorry, progression-free survival. Yeah. Um, and so that doubled that time. Um, but at the end of the day, I think we also very much care about how long our patients survive, so the overall survival. Um, and that did not uh, show a difference between those two arms of so being on a placebo or being on a PARP inhibitor. And so I think we have to think very carefully about how to really interpret it. And I think that's part of what. Um, we'll let him have his word. So for me, it, it, it's, it, it's not. Um, I'm not sure that it changes what I would practice right now, but it, it gives me some pause to think about whether this is some, you know, this is more evidence that we need to have this information yeah. to be able to actually apply this. We, so back to our know. maintenance discussion, right? I mean, we were talking about breaks versus maintenance. If you had a BRCA patient, I mean, maybe this is your obvious, in that 5% or so of patients, patients, this would be your capecitabine. You would use this instead. Is that fair? I think that's fair. There is toxicity. I don't think mm. we can um, overlook that, that there is um, some toxicity <coughs> with PARP inhibitors, nausea, um, GI symptoms, and fatigue. It's a lot uh, better than fulfirinox. It's definitely better <laughs> than fulfirinox. A and lot. But it is <laughs> chemo -y, right? It is chemo it's, it's not, it's, it's not yeah. you know, voodoo target. It's chemo-y. It's uh, uh, yeah, DNA agree. damaging. Yeah.